a boy disappears in the middle of the day, never to be seen again. Later info could even link this boy's disappearance to an elite pedophile ring, along with people of high military status and even the royal family of England. Today, we are talking about the peculiar disappearance of 15-year-old Martin Allen. So let's get into it. Welcome to Peculiar Occurrences. I am your host, Lilith Nova. Martin Allen was born on October 19, 1964. He was a British teenager who mysteriously disappeared. On November 5, 1979, and no trace of Allen has ever been found, and his fate remains unknown. Martin Allen and his brothers grew up in a council flat in Horsey, London where their mother worked as a secretary in Tufnell Park Primary School. When Martin was 12 years old, his father obtained a job as a chauffeur to the Australian High Commissioner. And the whole family got to move to a beautiful little cottage on the grounds of the Australian High Commission in Kenningston. This was a very large change in their lives and their neighbors even included some very famous and wealthy people including the de bears jewelry family as well as people like margaret thatcher and ted heath they were regular visitors to the street and thatcher even had a passing acquaintance with alan's father martin attended the central foundation grammar school in Old Street and was seen as a very bright young man. He was supposed to be very good at French, mathematics, and drawing. Martin was a shy boy and thought a little bit younger than his own age. He seemed very content in his life and certainly was not the type to have run away. On November 5th, 1979, young Martin had traveled home from school on the railway on the London Underground Railway. His intention was to go and see his older brother Bob and his new baby, though he had to return home first in order to collect some money along with some things that his mother was sending to the baby. At around 3.50 p.m. he had said goodbye to some schoolmates on King's Cross Station and they watched him walk over and stand in line to depart back to his home. Early reports state that this was the last confirmed sighting of Martin. Yet later reports state that he had arrived home around 5 p.m. as witnessed by his brother Kevin and grabbed a few things and then left right back out. Alan was supposed to have gone over to his brother Bob's house but he never arrived. Uh, knowing that if it got too late he would just stay the night with his brother Bob. His parents were none worried about him, thinking he was safe and sound at his brother's house. His brother, on the other hand, had thought that Martin had changed his mind and decided not to come and didn't think much more about it. Around 7 p.m. the next day, uh, when he didn't show up for dinner, his mother began to worry. So she calls Bob up and finds out he had never arrived. Then she called up a couple of Martin's best friends from school and found out he had never shown up at school that day. So of course, the parents called the police. When Martin Allen was reported missing, this launched a full-scale search supported by the media. This failed to locate the boy. The police even searched his bedroom for nine hours and couldn't find not a speck of the boy's DNA. This is one very strange part of the case because it didn't matter where they looked. They looked in places like his brushes, his toothbrushes, his bed. They could not find any DNA 
anywhere. And just as a side note, this statement actually confused me very much because it said they didn't find any of his belongings or anything, but it didn't really elaborate on it. Like, it didn't say if the room seemed to have been cleaned in some sort of bleach or acid or anything like that, or what could have happened to the clothes. And I don't see how officers could have searched his bedroom for nine hours and their parents not be a suspect when they don't find any of his belongings or any of his DNA. That's just my own personal note. If anybody out there knows any more about that part of this case, please let me know down below. Okay, moving on. Now, after a TV appeal about five weeks after the disappearance, an anonymous man came forward to let the police know that he had seen some suspicious activity at the railway on that day. The man reported that about 4.15 that day, which would be about half an hour after Martin supposedly went missing from the first account of his last sighting, um, that he had seen a man with his arms around a little boy that matched Martin's description. The boy seemed distressed and both parties seemed nervous as they stepped onto the tube way. The witness saw the man probe the boy in the back and warn him not to run as they got off of the train at their exit point. The pair supposedly left the train at Earl's Court Station. The witness described the man as being six foot tall, in his 30s, well built, and with very blonde hair, with a mustache, and was wearing a denim jacket with trousers. The investigation to find the man was described at the time as London, London's largest house-to-house -house search. This included a thorough search of every property around Earl's Court along with a artist impression of the man and identikits of the man. Investigators spoke to 200 possible suspects and altogether spoke to 50,000 people and got 600 statements during this inquiry and still the identity of the man has never been discovered. Then Martin Allen's brother Jeffrey alleged that early on in the investigation, uh, the family had actually been told that the police believed that there were some very high up profiled people involved in this case and that maybe they should just be quiet and not push this any further before someone really got hurt. The case was closed in the 1980s, but was reopened in 2009 in light of new information. The police that were now in, in charge of the investigation admitted that this case baffled their department. And although the public was very highly responsive to this case, they had very few leads. The police interviewed serial killer Dennis Nelson twice about the disappearance of Martin Allen, but no evidence of a connection to him was ever found. In 2012, the police investigated allegations of child abuse and molestation that had went back over 20 to 30 years. This included a reinvestigation of claims of child abuse at the Elm Guest House was a London guest house bedding breakfast that was known to have had a lot of child abuse, child molestation taking place in this house during the 1970s and the 1980s. This was a very highly publicized case because a lot of high ranking military officers along with people in like parliament and connected to royals was thought to have frequented this place. At one point, there was a seize on the house where several child pornography videos had been found, but no connection to Martin was ever made. It was thought, though, that Martin, along with a boy from India named Vishna Mahatra, may have been not only abducted, but murdered by pedophiles at this house around that time. In 2015, Operation Midland officers had told Kevin Allen, Martin's brother, to prepare for the worst. 
that they had had credible evidence from a VIP gang survivor that Martin had been murdered. Operation Midland interviewed a man only known as Nick, who alleged that he saw three boys being murdered by the pedophile network. One had been ran over, the other had been strangled during an orgy by a conservative MP, and the third killed in front of a government minister. Nick told the police that former Tory MP Harvey Proctor had been responsible for at least two of the murders and could be implemented in the third. Proctor, of course, denied all allegations in full and and either didn't or acted if he didn't recognize a pictures of the boy in question. The allegations were proved false and Nick was said to be a fantasist, though police stuck hard for a long time saying that they really thought Nick was a credible witness. Kevin Allen, Martin's brother, told a news publication that the Australian Commission had used a chauffeur company that had employed the notorious Dirty Dozen child abductor Cindy Cook, along with Jimmy Chavelle's chauffeur, David Smith, who had committed suicide before standing trial on sex charges. He was also believed to have connections with this company. This would also be the same company that employed Martin's father. Kevin Allen claims this story is historic and that no one on it will ever come forward because these are actually the very people that were running the world at that time. In 2016, Operation Mousewick suspended Operation Midland and was actually formed just to reinvestigate it, Martin Allen's case. In 1998, it was reported to the family that police had gotten an anonymous tip off and actually found a shrine dedicated to Martin in a in an alleged pedophile's home. Officers reportedly visited the house of the 62-year-old man and found a makeshift shrine with newspaper cuttings, pictures, and even a gravestone dedicated to Martin Allen. It stated, in memory of Martin Allen. This bizarre development sparked a small interest in the story once again, but with no, no leads to anything, to any actual crime, it soon died, died out. In 2009, the police told Kevin and Jeffrey that the files from the case had been destroyed in a flood. And in 2009, Alan's parents succeeded and decided they have decided he has passed away. Though they they were giving up the fight at this time, they really thought that the boy had been abducted, taken to another country, and forced to do child pornography. They stated that their wishes were simply to know what had happened and why. Martin's father, Tom, died in 2012, and since his mother has also passed away without ever finding out what truly happened to their son. After the death of their father, um, Martin's brother had found out that their father had kept under their bed every clipping that had ever come out about Martin's case, along with similar cli along with clippings from similar cl cases to Martin's. A very sad ending to a decades-long story, and what happened to Martin still affects his family to this very day, with his brother speaking in publications about how thinking about what had happened to their brother makes them so much more cautious with their own children, having a fear that someone might swoop in and take them too. So what do you think about this peculiar occurrence. What happened to Martin Allen? Let me know what you think about this down below. And while you're down there, check out my description box for your peculiar occurrence gear. We got some really great shirts and even some pants. 
as well. Share this out to all your peculiar friends. Throw me a like on there. I really need it. As well, if you're new here, subscribe. Become part of our peculiar squad. And until next time, keep your eyes peeled for all things peculiar. Do 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 Are you listening?